Hey everybody, Jay at Lock and Lube. Today we are really excited to show you our grease fitting relocation manifold kits. We love having these in our product line and today we're out in Lyme, New Hampshire where Lock and Lube was founded and we're gonna show you the full install step-by-step -step of the manifold kit on our riding mower back here so that you can see how easy it is to use these kits to relocate those fittings that are really hard to get to, really annoying, maybe so annoying that you aren't actually greasing them regularly. We're gonna show you how to use this kit to make your life a whole lot easier. Let's talk through what's going on with the mower and what we're hoping to do with this uh, relocation kit. Sure, so this is, uh, this is a mower that I've had for probably 10 or 15 years, and uh, it's more of a um, commercial grade, so there are a lot of grease fittings on it. The really troublesome ones, there's one right here that the vertical clearance to other components makes it really hard to actually get a, uh, a greasing tool onto. And the other two, the two that are shown there, control hubs front and rear, way back in here. And there's another matching one over on the other side. It's another one that you can tell has not been greased in quite a long time. My goal here is to bring those out to some place where they're uh, easy to get to so that in my normal greasing routine, it's something that I can uh, hit really easily. So we're gonna show you all the parts and pieces that go together to make your manifold block. I think we've got some nice space here where we've got, you know, we've got a lot of options in this plate where we can put that block once we assemble it. So we've got our machined block here, stainless steel hardware, and then you've got your grease fittings and some other stuff. We'll show you how to put this together. We have a four port block here. We're actually only gonna use three of them today. We're gonna put the grease fittings in on the top. We've also got dust caps included. So I line up the dust cap first and then screw my fitting on. We're gonna do this all just finger tight to start. And then when you're not using it, you got a nice cap to keep that port, that fitting clean. So like I said, we've got three here and uh, should be good to go. So we'll tighten that up with a wrench. And then on the bottom end here, same thing. Here's our straight compression fittings. And there you have it. So the assembled block is gonna have your grease fittings in the top with the dust caps already installed on them. And then on the bottoms, uh, you've got your compression fittings ready to accept the ends of your hoses once you get those relocated. All right, so we've identified the Zerks. Next step's gonna be understanding the threads of those grease fittings so that we pick the right adapter to replace it, right? So in this case, we've done that off camera. Uh, we've used our thread tester to check and confirm that they are quarter 28 fittings. So we're gonna use a quarter 28 elbow to replace them. We're gonna unscrew the Zerk fitting, replace it with an elbow. Obviously on, on the Lock and the website, we've got adapters for all of the most common grease fittings, whether they're SAE or metric. So we've got our, uh, in this case, a 5 sixteenths is what we need to get that grease fitting out. There it is, there's our little quarter 28 grease fitting. Where that Zerk fitting was, we're now gonna insert our compression tube fitting, is what we call it. So this is an elbow, one side is threaded uh, to match the threads of the Zerk, and the other side has a ferrule, a uh, compression ferrule inside of it that will accept the end of our relocation hose. All right, there. Okay, I got a couple right. turns. So we got the, getting the elbow in, we did remove the nut and ferrule just to get uh, the clearance we needed to put that elbow on in this case. Now we also offer straight options on the website. So if you have a space with tight clearance where this, uh, the 90 degree elbow may not have the room to spin, uh, not a problem. We're happy to help you if you call us. Make sure you get set up with the right parts. And again, you don't have to remove the nut and ferrule if you've got the clearance for it. In this case, we chose to remove it so that when we screwed the adapter in, uh, it could spin freely. We've cut the end of our hose to get it pretty close to flat here. And you'll see that it doesn't have to be perfect, but the, the thing to know about these is they thread in opposite directions, and that's to ensure that the connection stays snug. So to start with the hose sleeve, we're actually gonna go counterclockwise down onto the end of our hose. You will feel it bottom out when it gets all the way down. There we go. You can see a little bit of grease in there. All this hose is pre-filled with a universal grease so that you don't have to worry about pushing air into the fittings when you first use it. So we've got our sleeve 
and now we get to put our hose barb in. Uh, this one is going to go in as you'd expect, so clockwise to tighten. And this hose barb is gonna be fed down into the inside of the hose, whereas this sleeve is on the outside, and that's gonna create the tight collar that will hold pressure. We're gonna put our 12 millimeter down on the sleeve, 10 millimeter up on the hose barb, hold it in place like that. Um, if you're in your shop, obviously you could also use a vise. That's snug. And there you have it. Now that end of the hose is all ready to go. Yep, so we'll loosen the collar that holds the ferrule in place. Just, yeah, even a quarter turns probably enough. And feed that in, feed the hose barb in until it bottoms out. And then tighten up the nut, just finger tight, and then you can put a wrench on it to snug it down. All the way forward, all the way Yep, okay. that's full range of motion. Okay. All right, so this hose here is now connected into our first fitting and we're just gonna sort of test where we want that manifold. We'll cut, you know, we obviously don't want too much slack in this hose. We don't want it getting hung up in any of the moving parts underneath the mower deck here. So we'll, we'll size it up and, you know, keep in mind, you will have some extra hardware on the end, um, but we'll give ourselves a little wiggle room there and just cut right about there. The hose is fairly pliable. You can use a PVC cutter, like a ratcheting cutter, or if you got a nice pair of uh, scissors or wire snips, you know, those work too. All right. And now we're gonna repeat the same process of putting on the threaded sleeve and the hose barb on this end. Right, and you wanna give that a little push to get it to seat. And then once you get it started, it's easy to keep going. And there, once you're about 90% of the way in, you feel the resistance really start as you're pushing it down into the hose itself. And there, that bottoms out, snugs everything up, and that end is ready for the manifold. Okay, so we've run our second line. The end of our hose set up with our hose barb. Everything's snugged on. And you can see why we generally propose that most people are gonna want a 90 degree elbow. Uh, coming out of there because of the length of the hardware. All right, so we've drilled our holes uh, into the plate here and our hardware lines up nicely. I'm gonna reach in behind so we can screw this thing in tight. Also, if you determine that you wanted that manifold block to be out from the machine at all, uh, you could obviously put some washers in there. You should have uh, plenty of thread behind it if that's something that you wanted to do. There we go. Yeah. For anyone who's paying attention, the nuts on the back here are 11 30 seconds. And now we're just gonna snug up the compression fittings on the bottom. So you push that in until it bottoms out. Snug up that compression fitting until it's tight. All right, so we've got all three lines connected. And they take grease after all those years of not being serviced. Right. Yeah. You can almost hear the bearings just breathing a sigh of relief.